Welcome to West Country Wanderings and welcome to vlog number seven for the month of February of 2022 here on my channel. We're here in the town of ross on wye in the county of Herefordshire. It's the first time been to Herefordshire since I did that little train trip back a couple of months ago. So you're most welcome here in Herefordshire. And if you join me, I'll tell you a little bit more about this town, some of the people that came from the town and all the related about what's happening on my channel, West Country Wanderings. just tell you about where we are in the town of ross on -Wye. Behind me here is the wonderful River Wye. Of course, as you can see, it's flooded at the moment. We've had a lot of rain. In fact, I won't lie to you, it's been a challenge trying to create content over the past week or so because we've had not one, not two, but three storms. I think we're on Storm Franklin. I can't remember the first one, but we had Storm Eunice went through. Now we've got the, the tail end of Storm Franklin. Checking the weather, it is supposed to brighten up, the rain is supposed to ease and the wind is supposed to drop down, so that's the theory anyway. I've come to a bit of a sheltered location here in the town, beautiful little garden here, I'll show you around a bit later. And uh, we have to say we have the wonderful River Wye behind me here. So how did Ross on Wye got its name? Well, the Ross part of the name becomes from the Celtic, which means promontory. And as you can see, the town is high above the River Hart Wye, which is just be below me there. But in 1931, the General Post Office, the GPO, as was known in this country, later became BT and Royal Mail and all of that, if you're not familiar with the GPO, they decided to add on the bit on why and the reason they did that was to avoid confusion with the town of Ross in Scotland. Now Ross on Wye is most famous for the town in Britain where tourism, British tourism first began. How, how did it actually begin here? Well in 1745 the then rector Dr John Egerton decided to start taking some people he knew on day trips on the River Wye, and that later grew. In 1782, William Gilpin, a famed author and illustrator of books, produced the first tourist guide, Observations on the River Wye, became a big hit, and it brought more people here to the Wye and the Wye Valley. In fact, by 1808, there were eight large boats plying their trade up and down the River Wye, and later on, a lot of the hotels and inns that sprung up to cater for this newly founded tourist trade had their own boats, which they would lease, and then take people out on the river while they were staying here in Ross and further around the Wye Valley. Now, Ross on Wye is sometimes known as the land of the hedgehog, in actual fact, the Celts, when they first settled here, and well, actually moved out some early settlers, they didn't call it Ross, which obviously we say means promontory. It was actually called Ergnig, which means the land of the hedgehog. I'll put in the exact spelling below. When the Saxons settled here, later on, they renamed the town Arkenfeld, which actually means land of the urchin. In fact, if you go in to look in the church, you can see crests of various prominent families, and a lot of them feature hedgehog as part of the family crest. Now, if you visit this delightful town in Herefordshire, Ross on Wye, you'll come across a pub called the Man of Ross, and you'll also see a blue plaque near the marketplace where this gentleman lived. And he was, the reason he was known as Manoros is because he was a philanthropist. John Kirrell was born in 1637, actually just over the way in Gloucestershire at a village called Dimmock, which we'll visit at some point here on West Country Wanderings, because it's famous for poets. He, in his early 20s, gave up a lot of the pleasures of life and lived a very, very simple and frugal existence, despite having lots of family wealth. Any form of wealth that he did have, he ploughed back into the town and he opened 
uh, various schools in the town to improve the educational standards. This part of Herefordshire, and perhaps his most famous lasting legacy, is the prospect which is at the back or the front of St Mary's Church, which stands high on the promontory above the River Wye. And we're going to have a look at that. And you have the fantastic views over there. And he wanted to do that to improve the town's folks well-being. The town has lots of notable people. I won't have time today to go through all of the famous people and notable land people throughout history of this wonderful town, but I'm just going to mention a few of them now. Now, perhaps one of the most famous people that lived in town was the playwright Dennis Potter. Dennis Potter was born, I think he was born in the 1930s, perhaps nine, early 1940s. I'll drop in the exact date below. He actually wasn't born in Ross and Wye, but he was born at nearby Colford in the Forest of Dean, and that's an area we'll start to have a look at in a bit more detail here on West Country Wander, because we've not touched the forest at all in Gloucestershire. But he met his wife locally. She was from Ross. I think it was on a, a dance, one of those dances they had in the 40s. He married her and they set up home here in Ross on Wye and he developed his writing career. And he had huge hits on, with the BBC in the uh, late 60s and throughout most of the 1970s going into the 1980s. Uh, most famously, perhaps know these, Pennies from Heaven and The Singing Detective. Dennis Porter died in 1994. In fact, if you go to St Mary's Church, you'll see his very, very simple plaque uh, where his remains buried. Uh, but he also had a famous daughter, of a recently found out. I think he had three children and he had a daughter called Sarah Potter. And in the 1980s, she was a famous cricketer. In fact, uh, she played for the England team, England ladies cricket team. And she had some huge hits with that. So if you're follow cricket you'll probably know the name Sarah Potter but uh, I I'm, don't follow it that well but uh, yeah she uh, was uh, Dennis Potter's daughter and I uh, say he lived here and I believe that Sarah Potter still does indeed live here in the town of Ross on Wye. Now another famous resident also with a television connection but not behind the camera this time but in front of the camera and this was the actress Noel Gordon. In fact Noel Gordon was born in Birmingham but she moved to ross on wye in the 1960s and she actually lived here throughout most of her life, 60s, 70s, and until she died in 1985. I think she just moved to Birmingham just before she sadly passed away. Now, a lot of my younger people that are watching YouTube, I know uh, a lot of my demographic that watch YouTube, my channel is uh, older, but I do have some younger people probably won't know on earth Noel Gordon is. She was in a ATV soap opera called Crossroads. I also need to explain this point what ATV was. ATV was the ITV commercial station for Birmingham and the Midlands, and they set up their own soap opera akin to like Coronation Street and Emmerdale of its day. It had a revival in the early 2000s, but she was probably the most famous and well known actor on the, the series extremely popular. She played the character Meg Richardson, who was the matriarch of this Midlands hotel called, or motel should I say, called Crossroads. As I say, she lived over. If you look at the, uh, from the prospect, you'll see a big, large white house on the other side of the river, and that's where she lived. And in fact, she was also buried in St Mary's Churchyard, and I'll just include a clip of her grave now. Now, just as an aside to that, is that uh, since doing research for that, I've found out that the famous uh, writer whose name's just gone completely out of my head, but I'll put it in below, he's done a lot of stuff with Doctor Who, uh, Russell T. Davis, a Welsh guy, very talented, also a very famous uh, screenwriter. He's just written a script. It's called Nolly. It's going to be on ITV perhaps later this year. And it will star Helena Bonham Carter playing the role of Noel Gordon. A couple more famous residents for you. Uh, the names themselves won't be familiar. Uh, this is from the world of music now. In the 60s and 70s, there was a group called Mott the Hoopals. You have to be of a certain age to remember that group. And they had uh, two of their band members that came from this town, one Pete over in Watts and Dale Griffin, and they both lived and indeed passed away in the town. I think they uh, both died around about 2016. I'll put the information of that the usual way below.
final one from here from Russell Mai was a gentleman called Juxon Barton. Never come across the name Juxon before. I'll put the spelling in below. And he was born in the town. Again, I'll put the year. Uh, and he became the governor of Fiji. Quite an incredible. There are lots of other people, if you just want to check it out yourself, so many to mention of uh, people that came from this fabulous town here in Herefordshire. So before I go into, I'm sorry, it's a little bit cold, challenging conditions here today, <laughs> just a little bit, but uh, it's actually my f first YouTube anniversary, yay! So yes, yeah, so I've been around on YouTube now for one year exactly, and I started off, and I'll put a little thumbnail up now, my very first video when I was living in South Devon, and I did a video all about Dartmouth and the steps in Dartmouth, and the history of those steps, some of the interesting little things that happened in and around those steps in that beautiful town in South Devon. Just a little aside to that, just to tell you a little bit of background how that all came together, was that um, we'd gone through uh, two lockdowns. We were, we were just in the third lockdown. And obviously you could only move about two, I think it was like two, one or two miles away from you, where you lived to actually do, go out and da do daily exercise. I bought this uh, camera kit to, to get me started on uh, YouTube. And then what happened was that I did a piece of camera in the apartment. You can see at the start of where I was living at the time, at the start of the video, I thought it was all great. I was all doing that. And then I got my Joby stick out. Wasn't using it on tripod in those days. and was on the steps and I thought, oh, I'll just go and do that. And I just completely froze out in public. I just couldn't do it. Just couldn't face uh, talking into the camera. I had to do it several takes where I could, before I could even do. And if you go back and look at that video, you can see I was talking quite shyly. So what have I been doing since the last vlog, which was at, you've not checked that one out, it was at Yetminster in uh, Dorset. I kind of made a bit thing of it, where am I today? But I hadn't done that today, I've just gone straight in, told you where I am. But uh, yeah, delightful county of uh, Herefordshire. I'm sure we'll be back here many, many times. It's not too far away from where I live in uh, Gloucester. It's relatively easy to get to. We'll probably cover the city of Hereford at some point as well. What's been happening though since my last vlog uh, some four or five weeks ago? Well, quite a bit. Although we haven't had ideal weather, uh, I did get down to Cornwall. I did a video called Wanderings at Poldhu. Now, if you haven't seen that, Poldhu is a place on the Lizard in the far western, southwestern tip of Cornwall and we had a look at where Marconi started his first radio transmissions across the Atlantic. You can actually see the cable stays where those aerials were tied up to do those transmissions across the Atlantic there. Uh, check that one out if you've not seen that, particularly if you're interested in telecommunications and uh, early tech. It tells you a little bit about that. It's also got some stunning coastal scenery there as well. We then, I then did canal update, that's a Stroudwater and Thames and Seven Canal update number five. And number five was about the plans that were going to happen at the Whitminster end where they're going to build a new visitor centre car park and lots of other bits and pieces there and also the plans for getting the canal underneath the M5, that, that was that one on there. And then I did a, a railway one, hadn't done a railway one for a little while, telling you about the little known railway military and mineral line which ran from the village of Froster off the main Midland Bristol Birmingham line to the delightful Gloucestershire village of Frampton on Severn. Also had a revisit to my woodland in Gloucestershire which was a kind of a late winter very early spring. We had a look to see if there was any transitions to see if there was any signs of spring there. There were some bits and pieces and I then told you a little bit about some of the uh, lichens and, and fungi that we saw on that. So I'm not check that one out. I will be revisiting that woodland again. It'll be kind of a mid-spring one. So probably be, that'll be appearing not in, in next month, in March. That'll probably be landing in April. I then did something which was quite an ambitious project. It took quite a bit of time to do because it involved three separate full days. And it was the story of chocolate and canals, in particular the story of Cabris and the Worcester and Birmingham Canal and the Gloucester Sharpness Canal. 
and I took a day trip up to Bourneville. I really enjoyed that. I was very, very impressed with the village of Bourneville, just only four miles to the south of Birmingham city centre. I uh, loved filming around there. It was, uh, I thought it would be difficult because it's in a city, but it's not in a city because you've got those huge parks I discovered, which no one in them, I wasn't bothered at all by anybody there. And then on another day, I caught the train up to Worcester and the bus to Blackpool to tell you about the former Cadbury factory site there. We had a look at the Diglis Basin and finally I then went back over to Frampton on the Gloucester Sharp Nest to look at the former Cabri Works there as well. We've also done Cotswold Walks 1. This is a, a one, first one of a new series. We actually did a circular walk around the beautiful river Windrush. I'll actually be doing another one soon. I'll tell you more about that. And that's coming up for the month of March. I then did another canal update on the Stroudwater Thames and Seven Canal. But we visited Brimscombe Port, where I told you about all the exciting projects that's going to be happening at that location there. And finally, this month, I did the Laurie Lee story. I did a walk over to the Slad Valley from where I live and told you about the story of the writer Laurie Lee, who lived for many of his years in the village of Slad. So what do we have coming up on West Country Wanderings for the month of March? Well, loads of stuff. We've got, uh, as I say, Cotswold Walks 2. I'll probably be going over to the River Evenlode. I don't know the River Evenlode either. So uh, again, from that book that was written by Colin Handy, uh, I'll be exploring the River Evenlode and doing a circular walk there. And I'll be including details of that walk if you wanted to do it yourself. There's going to be another canal update, you won't be surprised to know, which will be number seven, which will be coming from Siddington and also the Cotswold Water Park. There'll be another video from Cornwall, possibly in the southeast part of the, the county. Uh, have a look out for that as well. There's going to be some content coming up from the Forest of Dean. As I say, we've not covered that part of Gloucestershire as yet. Before I get blown away, there's going to be some more content from the Herefordshire and Gloucestershire Canal. In fact, if you stick around towards the end of this video, there'll be a bonus special, I'll give you a little bit of a sneak peek of what's coming up on my channel next. It'll lead into it and then that'll upload a couple of days later. It's one of the locations that are restored on that wonderful canal, trying to link the city of Hereford to the city of Gloucester. Now, before I go today, I just wanted to say a big thank you to the, all the new subscribers I've picked up over the past month. It's been quite a few of you, so if you're new to the channel, this is the first monthly vlog, you're most welcome here. And I'd love to hear from you if you drop me a comment. I'd love to know what sort of content you look for. Obviously, I cover the West Country. Just to explain, if you're not familiar with what I, the area that I cover, uh, I try to cover the whole part of the, the West Country, the greater West Country. So that includes the, the, the counties that I used to live in, which is Devon and Cornwall. And I also include the county where I live in Gloucestershire. We've also been looking at places in Herefordshire and Worcestershire. I've done little bits in Warwickshire as well. We've done little bits in Dorset and Somerset. And hopefully we'll be doing some more in Dorset and Somerset before too long as we go into the better weather and I can have traveled a bit further afield. Now, as we come towards the end of this video, I would say there is a bonus one bit, canal bits, if you want to stick around for that, and then I'll lead into my next canal video. But before we do that, I've got a list of thank yous, people I'd like to thank. Sorry, I'm hopeless with names, so I'm sorry if I do need to glance down and just glance at my kind of aid memoir here in my little notebook. But uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Ron Parkinson's work, Walks. I do apologise, Ron, when I did the Dorset one last time, I did mention you and I didn't go into more details. If you want to check out Ron's fantastic channel he does walks mainly around the Gloucestershire area but also he does some content from Cornwall as well from time to time particularly does explorations of old railways that have been closed down to see what remains today he also does content from the wonderful Cotswolds as well so have a look at Ron's channel as I say it's called Parkinson's Walks we also have Carol and Derek Carol and Derek live in Worcester, close to Worcester, and they've done some fantastic videos around the Cotswolds, but also including places further afield into London as well. And I again appreciate uh, Carol and Derek for their ongoing support. We've also got Roy, Roy Edwards from Roy Edwards Channel, and uh, hi Roy, thanks very much. He's, he's one of my early persons that have uh, been supporting me here on the very, very early days, as in fact has Debs from 
Deb's most excellent adventures and uh, she's been supporting me as well. So thank you to these two people. It's been absolutely brilliant. So check those. I'll put all the links for these channels down the bottom so you won't need to try and remember them all. Uh, we've also got Louise from Southwest Sundays. Louise is one of the newer people on YouTube. She's uh, just started, I think in the past three or four months, making content. She uploads a video every Sunday. And as it implies, it's also from the West Country, from the Southwest. Particularly, she does videos from Exmoor and from East Devon and also into Somerset as well. So check out Louise's brilliant channel, one of the new creators here. She's going to go far. She's got a lot of commitment, so want to check out her channel and give us some support. Also, Wendy Moore, uh, Wendy Moore uh, often watches my videos and comments on them, so thank you very much, Wendy. Really appreciate that. And Jay from What's That Guy Doing? Jay lives in Plymouth in Massachusetts on the other side of the Atlantic, so he does uh, walking trail videos and fishing videos. So if that's your kind of thing, then please check out his channel. It's really, really good content over there. Uh, also, some other people that not necessarily creators, but they comment regularly. I've got uh, John Timbrell. I've got Des Byrne, John Foster, uh, Roger Glover, and John Warboys. A couple of other YouTubers to mention. There's also Mark and Michelle from Eminem's Adventures. Brilliant. Thank you, Mark and Michelle. Uh, some great content there. Check out their channel as well. I'll put the details in below. And also Stephen and Yana. They have a brilliant channel, particularly do with history in the county of Essex. And also they do trips into London as well. So that's worth checking. So thank you. Thanks to all of you. Sorry if I haven't mentioned you this time. There's been so many. And I say I appreciate those new subscribers as well. I will be uh, trying hard to get out as much content as the weather permits in the West Country area with them soon. So that's it for vlog number seven here on my channel for the month of February 2022. Thank you for joining me. If you hang around, there's going to be some bits of a walkthrough of the town here at Ross on White to show you more, more of the town. And then there's going to be a little extra snippet of a canal. And then that'll lead into another day or two, there'll be a canal update from the Herefordshire and Gloucestershire Canal. But thanks for joining me here today on this update, giving you a flavour of what's happened and um, what's coming up until next time take care of yourselves thanks for your support and your subscriptions and your fantastic comments hope to see you again very soon all the best now cheers goodbye
welcome to my little bonus section. The end of my vlog number seven. Hope you enjoyed the vlog today. I'm here at Oxen Hall on the Herefordshire and Gloucestershire Canal, looking at restored sections. In fact, there's a very large section, including a lock and Lockkeeper's Cottage and an aqueduct and also a railway bridge which I'd like some more information on but to watch that content you'll need to watch my video on the Herefordshire and Gloucestershire Railway here at Oxenhall. This just gives you a taster here because this towpath has been cleared although it is rather muddy. The reeds have recently been cleared here and uh, it just gives you a taste of how much work has been done. Now I Obviously, I've been doing the Stradwater and Thames and Seven canals, you've been watching that, and also we've done bits on the Sharpen Gloucester Sharpness Canal and the Worcester Birmingham Canal, and only one little bit on the Kennet and Avon, and obviously I'll, I will go back there again at uh, some future point, trying to fit in all the projects. <laughs> I've got my going on my channel, and also the Cotswold Walks and Devon and Cornwall stuff. So yeah, lots going on. Uh, in sight of that, because I've actually didn't appreciate how much work had been done here on the Herefordshire Gloucestershire Canal. I knew that a couple of sections had been restored through my YouTube friend, ally, Ron from Parkinson's Walks, who did a section um, a little while ago where some houses have been restored. We haven't actually looked at that one yet. That will be coming up. But yeah, this just gives you a taste of here. So if you want to know some more, then look out for that video which will be appearing in a couple of days. It'll be entitled Oxenhall, Herefordshire and Worcestershire Canal. I hope you enjoyed it today, including this little bit of bonus towpath walking content. See you all again soon. Cheers. Goodbye for now.